have been referred to the cardiac arrhythmia service because you have an abnormal heart rhythm that is affecting your heart rates. Some people have very slow heart rates or problems with the natural wiring in their hearts that prevents the top and bottom chambers of the heart from talking to each other. These people need a pacemaker to prevent their heart rates from going too slow or to keep the top and bottom chambers of their heart beating in sync. Other people are at risk for dangerous heart rhythms from the bottom chambers of their hearts and need defibrillators to shock their heart back into a normal rhythm should this dangerous rhythm occur. Both pacemakers and ICDs can have one, two, or three leads, and your doctor will determine how many leads are appropriate in your particular case. Your doctor will also determine whether you will be able to go home the same day as your procedure. This will depend on the type of device you receive and what time your case finishes. If you are able to be discharged the same day as your procedure, you will need someone to come pick you up and review the instructions, and you will need a companion to stay with you at home overnight. Whether you are getting a pacemaker or an ICD, the procedure and post-procedure care is the same. At the start of the procedure, you will be given some sedation or anesthesia to keep you comfortable, and you will be connected to some monitoring equipment to watch your heart rates and blood pressures during the procedure. An area on your upper chest will be prepped and cleaned, and then you will be covered with a sterile drape to keep the area clean. Your doctor will give you numbing medicine to an area on your upper chest, and then will make a small incision here to access the vein. They will put small catheters or tubes through the vein and will feed the leads or wires for the device down into the chambers of your heart. These leads will be gently screwed into the heart muscle and will then be attached to the battery of the device that will be tucked under your skin at the incision site. The incision site will first be closed with a layer of absorbable sutures that are under the skin. These will dissolve over time and will be absorbed by your body. You will not need to have any stitches or staples removed. Thin white pieces of tape called steri strips will then be placed directly on top of the skin to bring the skin layers together neatly. A big piece of gauze and tape will lay on top of the skin to cover the entire incision. The tape and gauze dressing will stay in place for five full days after your device is placed so the area remains clean and dry. One of the big things we worry about with a new device is infection. If your device gets infected, it can be quite serious, and the post-procedure care I will describe is to prevent infection. As I just mentioned, the tape and gauze dressing over your incision will stay in place for five days after your device is placed. This may not get wet, so you must either sponge bathe, or if you have a handheld shower head, you can shower if you keep the shower head below your waist. You should not take a shower normally for these first five days, so the dressing does not get wet or fall off early. After five days, you can remove the tape and the gauze dressing at home. You will notice the steri strips underneath. These can get wet and will curl up and fall off on their own over the next one to two weeks. You may get in the shower once the dressing is removed. Wash the area by letting the soap and water run gently over your skin. Do not scrub directly at the site or pick off the steri strips. After showering, keep the skin clean and dry and avoid using powders, moisturizers, ointments, or lotions on top of the area to avoid irritation and infection. An additional point we want to make to avoid infection is to avoid submerging the site in water for one month. This means no swimming, baths, hot tubs, lakes, oceans, or pools. The other thing we worry about with a new device is that the leads heal properly and stay where they are supposed to stay. As I mentioned earlier, the leads of your device are gently screwed into the heart muscle. Over the next six weeks following your implant, your body will grow tissue around the tips of these leads to anchor them in. Until that happens, the leads are very fragile and we have to limit any movement that will pull your chest at the insertion site so it doesn't pull the battery or the leads out of place. For six weeks after the procedure, the arm on the side of the implant, and by arm we mean elbow, cannot go above shoulder level. You can eat with that arm, wash your face, or even brush your hair. You should not reach all the way up over your head with that arm, reach back or push and pull, or lift more than five pounds with that arm for six weeks. Please be especially careful when getting dressed and undressed not to reach your arm back with the side the pacemaker is implanted on. Try to also avoid laying on the side of the device at night in bed. There are no restrictions with the other arm, we just want to be mindful of the side with the device. Way back when, we used to give everyone a sling to use for six weeks and said, if you don't move your arm at all, you won't do anything bad to the leads of the device. 
but these patients all got frozen shoulder syndrome and got stuck that way due to a buildup of scar tissue. Frozen shoulder syndrome can be very painful and often requires physical therapy. So we do want you to start using your arm gently, but avoid the big movements for six weeks. You may opt to take the sling home and use it occasionally when you need a reminder or if you're going to a crowded place like an airport or Fenway. We ask that you do not wear the sling full time. You should avoid activities that strain your chest or upper arm muscles for six weeks, including golf, pushing a lawnmower, tennis, swimming, etc. You should discuss with your doctor when it is safe to return to work. If your job is physical and requires heavy lifting, you may be asked to take an extended period of time off to allow for the pacemaker to heal. You will not be able to drive for two weeks after the device is implanted. The reason for this is both to prevent big movements with the arms that could dislodge the leads and also the seat belt on the driver's side or steering wheel could cause trauma to the implant site, which could cause bleeding and delay wound healing. You may have other driving restrictions if you have had fainting or if you have fainted in the past due to your abnormal heart rate or rhythm. It's normal to have some discomfort at the incision site for a few days after the procedure. We recommend Tylenol for the pain, but in some cases, you might require a prescription for something stronger. We will also review your medications and when it is safe to resume these. We typically hold blood thinners for a few doses before and after the procedure. This will be decided by your doctor based on your case. If at any point in the next days, weeks, months, or years, you see any bleeding or pus at your incision site, any redness, swelling, or if you have a fever, chills, or night sweats, these could be signs of bleeding or an infection. The sooner we treat that, the better the outcome. You should call the office or the device clinic and let us know. We would rather you call us every day if you are worried about something, rather than waiting to see if it gets worse. Also, in terms of infection, we recommend no dental work unless it's an emergency for three months post-procedure. The mouth has a lot of bacteria, and we like to eliminate the risk of this bacteria getting into your bloodstream and causing an infection. Please postpone any routine cleanings or dental work you have scheduled. If something emergent happens, for example, if you break a tooth, need a root canal, etc., please tell your dentist you have a new device and need antibiotics to protect you. After the first three months post-procedure, these antibiotics are no longer necessary. After your device is placed, it will be paired with a monitoring device of some sort. This may be a phone application or a monitor you will keep next to your bed. Your device will run self-checks on itself in the middle of the night. Your monitoring system will download these checks, save them, and if everything is stable, it will send us a report every three months. If the monitor notes an abnormal value or detects that there is something wrong with the device, it will send us a report sooner. We will call you if we see something that needs to be addressed. No news is good news in terms of your remote transmissions. Of note, if you have a defibrillator and your device shocks you, we will get an alert, but only after this episode has been retrieved by your monitor. If your device shocks you, you should always call us and go to the emergency department. In these cases, we would want to determine how we can hopefully prevent you from getting shocked in the future by either changing your medications or with a procedure. Be sure not to drive after you receive a shock until you speak with a provider from our team. This is for your own safety as well as others. If you are discharged the same day as your procedure, you may be asked to send in a transmission from your home monitor or the phone application for the next business day after your procedure. A representative from the device company will review these instructions with you before you are discharged home. The device clinic here at MGH will review this transmission and you will get a phone call from them to check in on you. You also have the ability to send in a remote transmission to our clinic at any time, should you experience any unusual symptoms at home. This includes chest pain, palpitations, shortness of breath, dizziness, or lightheadedness. We would also like you to call us if you choose to send in a remote transmission so our device clinic can review it sooner rather than later to determine if anything appears to be abnormal. After you are discharged, you will come to the device clinic a few weeks after your implant so we can check your wound and make any necessary changes to the device. Until this appointment and after, the home monitor or phone app will let us know if everything is stable with the device. If you are having any symptoms, please call the office. If you have any general questions, 
you may call the office or send a message through Patient Gateway. Please note, we do not check Gateway messages overnight or on weekends.